Gabriel Winant, The Next Shift, The Fall of Industry and the Rise of Healthcare in Rust Belt America. Dive into the fascinating transformation of labor markets in Rust Belt America in The Next Shift by Gabriel Winant. This book summary sheds light on how the fall of the steel industry paved the way for the rapid expansion of the healthcare sector. Understand the implications this shift has had on society, as employers prioritize profits over workforce welfare and the public and private welfare state evolves. Discover the racial and gender divides manifested in these industries, how healthcare has responded to rising costs, and the challenges faced by low-wage workers. The Trilemma of the U.S. Care Industry The U.S. care industry faces a trilemma with increasing polarization in the labor market. While the care sector continues to grow rapidly and is among the largest employers in the U.S., it operates at low margins with limited productivity and efficiency options. The employers in this sector seek to rid themselves of responsibility for their large workforce through fissuring, misclassifying workers as independent contractors. Care workers are responsible for everyone, but no one is responsible for them. The industry can either keep wages low, increase wages and shed jobs or rely on government intervention. The Rise and Fall of Pittsburgh Steel Industry Pittsburgh Steel Industry once provided the majority of jobs for blue-collar workers, with white women occupying clerical roles and black women taking on service and domestic work. However, there was a clear racial hierarchy with black men largely working as unskilled laborers. The industry's decline in the 1970s exacerbated the divide between those who had union jobs and those who did not, and it was driven a significant part of the workforce into the healthcare industry. In its heyday, Pittsburgh was the quintessential steel town, with steel mills and factories providing jobs for over 80% of workers in the steelmaking industry. However, the blue-collar jobs were subject to a clear racial hierarchy, where most black men worked as unskilled laborers and had little representation in skilled and semi-skilled roles. Furthermore, white women occupied clerical positions, which were barred to black women. The result was a largely male workforce, with around 75% being men and 60% working in manufacturing. Pittsburgh's dependence on the steel industry meant that it did not attract migrants, preserving the city's demographics and racial and gender divides. However, the decline of the industry in the 1970s had far-reaching effects, exacerbated the divide between union and non-union workers and drove a significant portion of the workforce into the healthcare industry. Overall, the male-headed household formed the elementary institution of the public-private welfare state. America's Steel Industry in Crisis in the late 1940s, the U.S. steel industry dominated global steel production, aided by government support. However, their lack of investment in advanced technology and focus on building larger plants led to outdated and unprofitable mills after a drop in demand post-Korean War. Unionized workers, seeking higher wages, added to the industry's woes. Policy makers were concerned over increased inflation that would arise from passing on rising costs to consumers. The Truman administration attempted unsuccessfully to nationalize the industry. By failing to invest in technology, steel mills had to reduce the workforce and pressure remaining workers, further dividing managers and workers. The Working Class Women's Burden After World War II, Working-class women in Pittsburgh took on the responsibility of being homemakers and raising children while their husbands worked in the steel industry. Despite their husbands being the sole earners, their income wasn't always enough to live a comfortable life. Women had to stretch the money as far as possible through budgeting and creativity, and in times of shortage, they had to hide their struggles from the community and their prideful husbands. They maintained the image of a working-class affluence and raised their children to follow in their footsteps, perpetuating the cycle of working-class life. The Impact of Deindustrialization on Black Families Deindustrialization in the 1960s affected unskilled laborers, most of whom were black men. With limited job opportunities, black families suffered from unemployment before most white families did. Black women transitioned into care jobs earlier than white women did, 
and the family's struggles to make ends meet were not hidden from the children. Black families were even more vulnerable because they did not have the security of owning their homes, largely due to racism. The situation led to overcrowding in black neighborhoods, with limited communal support. In response, Pittsburgh initiated the War on Poverty to provide job training and day care, but the white working class resisted these efforts. The Evolution of Health Care The demand for health care access increased in the 1930s, leading to the establishment of health insurance systems by industries. Unions negotiated the welfare benefit systems for their members and families, which allowed employers to substitute benefits with wages supported by tax subsidies. In the Pittsburgh area, the steelworkers joined the Blue Cross, which grew to become the largest health insurance company in western Pennsylvania. The increased quality of medical care led to rising costs, making medical care unaffordable for the uninsured. Medicare and Medicaid increased demand and prices, making it more challenging to afford medical care. Hospitals financed their expansions through donations, retained revenue, and debt finance, encouraging investments in expensive new technologies or new buildings to satisfy bondholders and patients. The evolution of healthcare has been influenced by racism and segregation, with white individuals benefiting more significantly from these developments. Impact of Steel Industry Collapse on Healthcare in Pittsburgh In the late 1970s, the steel industry in Pittsburgh collapsed, leading to massive job losses and a rise in unemployment. This had a ripple effect on the local economy, with reduced tax revenues resulting in cuts to public services. Healthcare remained relatively stable due to government programs, but new jobs were mainly at the lower end of the income bracket. Insurers also adopted a fixed payment system, reducing hospital revenues. As a result, hospitals began to focus on expensive procedures that would bring in more money, leading to cuts in staffing and wages. Low-level nursing staff turnover resulted in worse patient care. The collapse of the steel industry had a significant impact on the healthcare industry in Pittsburgh, and reform changed how hospitals operated. In conclusion, The Next Shift offers a comprehensive look at the changing landscape of American labor markets, particularly the transition from the steel industry to healthcare in areas like Pittsburgh. The insights presented in this book underscore the complex implications of these changes on various aspects of society, including the public-private welfare state, racial and gender divides, and economic inequality. As healthcare continues to grow, it reveals the hurdles faced in ensuring fair wages, responsible employment practices, and the quality of care that communities rely on. This thought-provoking book serves as a call to re-evaluate the priorities of burgeoning industries and the systems they impact.